it's murder. I mean, clearly it's murder. What can I do to help? Yeah, that's me. But February, I mean, that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? I didn't murder Simon. You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other, just that. Stories. Simon, Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work, mirror making, feature windows, artistic things, really beautiful things. Simon, Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work, mirror making, feature windows, artistic things, really beautiful things. Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. <laughs> if his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, and bought a photo. They said a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. It's the best one I have. It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with. And the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with and the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. 
someone must have done something to him, or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? No, he doesn't have any tattoos. He has a scar down here near his stomach, past his hip. Cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. He looks just like the photo. Um, he's not got his glasses on here though. He takes them off with the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know. He has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. Not book so much, or watching TV. He likes TV. It wasn't the present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He'd engraved the glass kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. Well, on his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. And he made the mirror, and he gave it to me. No, I've had enough coffee for today, thanks. Glass of water. My name is Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H. -N -N it's Pandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work for merit though, it's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Silver leaf? No. He normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. Perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. <laughs> so it was Friday evening, we had an argument, he left. On Saturday, he didn't come back. I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon. They had a job, but he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at the Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning. It just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. No. I think 
he spoke to Helen. She said he was upset about her argument, but I'm not sure what else he said. He likes Helen. He likes blondes. There's no couple stuff. A stupid argument. Nothing specific. No one knows how to push your buttons better than those you're close to. No. I mean, yes, we have arguments, but no, he never runs off. He always comes back. We make up. It's always that way. Yes. He left after the argument. It was about... Eight o'clock. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. I mean, I guess the rock. You've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. No, no one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone sang with you from the rock. He was wearing um, a shirt, with a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch, it's a really nice one, that was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, like Paddington Bear. Uh, he would have taken that with him, it's not in the house. Yes, there's a car that we share of Cavalier and a van he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look after it. Both of them are there now, parked on the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a visa. A silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so he usually pays with cash, but Eric convinced him to get one. Well, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Diane is really nice. She helps out with the glaziers, organises the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time. You must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. Not really. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come over for dinner. That would be us returning the favour. Diane is a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. 
And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seedfax. And I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? Simon and Eric arguing? No, I can't imagine they'd be arguing. And they get on so well. Unless it was something to do with work. Maybe Simon was being too much of a perfectionist. But I don't know. You should ask Diane. I got in the car and I drove. I just kept driving me north. Just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow, I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash, just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. the hospital. I don't see how it's hard. We've established I was in Glasgow when he was killed. You spoken with the hospital? When I was eight, Mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street. parents had a big powwow. We weren't even in the room and they decided we should get married. Yes, I'm fine. I won't be sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. It's morning sickness. No. 
Well, yes. You found out on my birthday. I told him I was pregnant. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind. But she kills him with her tears, and so it's a happy ending. Is that too much? I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> we had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. Yes. We'd fight. We fought on the beach once and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under and I kept it out. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. But that was it. It was just a moment. We made up afterwards. It was a love-hate relationship. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes. They're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it rather than have it longer. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch, that was my touch to make sure the alibi stuck. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Simon's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff, sad stuff, about when we lived there, about the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed. And I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile, was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open saw the body 
I screamed and that's when I called the police. Thing was wrong. The bags, I, I think they were from our kitchen, you can probably check that. We never go into the cellar, it's just a place we put things we don't need. Dad used to grow mushrooms there. The, the bags were taped up, I think it was parcel tape, but I think it was ours. Well, fine, considering. I got back into the house today, and that was weird, knowing your people have been there through my things. It's like I've been burgled. I mean, worse, obviously. I don't know. I haven't lived in the cellar yet. They sent a cleaner in, as good as new, he said. But they had to throw some stuff out could have get the blood out. And I'm still waiting to hear from the coroner so we can get a date set for the funeral. It's going to be a cremation. So. Yes. It was a cremation for the best. We both wore black and had bail, so it was easy. And after the funeral, everyone came back to the house. I had it served up sandwiches, and I stayed out of sight. Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. She recognised me from the window. She told me to come inside and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. It was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place.
Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. A police station. Yeah, when I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd saved money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up from the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. So my parents let me off. My mother called me Eve. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. Florence raised me in her home. I never left it. She kept me out of sight. It wasn't odd for people to see a midwife with a baby carrying in supplies, washing nappies, that sort of thing. I never knew any different. I grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. I thought it was like a reflection in the mirror. She was me. Florence was a warm, kind person. But she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I also found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it. Older papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story wasn't there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand, I guess. I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But I mean, I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I don't know, I don't know maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. No, it was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it and were going to try when he came back. Florence's family had a history of first-born girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread, maybe I misunderstood, or Sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. No, he doesn't keep a diary. That's my thing. I've kept one, well, as long as I can remember, since I was a girl. It helps make sense of my day. 
And when you're forced to put something into words, it just gives you perspective. Everyone's on the same page. It just became our way of life. We would swap places and take it in turns to do things. And we were very careful. Whoever had been out that day would come back and write a detailed diary so that we were on the same page. We had a list of rules that said what we could and couldn't do in any given situation. It was exhaustive. We lived a second life through those rules. Rules for things that could only ever happen inside our imaginations. We would consider all the permutations of future events and agree rules to walk our way through them. Twins. <laughs> really? Are you really asking me that question? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Twins. There were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins. Magical. We were the princesses. We had a poster of Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. Had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. Yes, I inherited it from my parents so it made sense to move back, me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways before the pregnancy. Reminded me of being a girl, a dollhouse in the attic, old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. Yes, I read a lot as a child and watched lots of TV. Then the doll's house we had, we still have in the attic. It's kind of a fairy castle. We used to play out there and make up our own stories. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? Yeah. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it. It was so huge. <laughs> it must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It's a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale. Little furniture. The lights work. Mirrors, beds, big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing it. We invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork from them all. Passports, diaries, and gave them all really elaborate stories. Once a moth got trapped in there, we'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. 
we ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. You want me to play something? Well, I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. Okay? Probably needs tuning. No. It's okay. How about a traditional ballad? It should be right up your street. Sisters came walking by the sea. Oh, the wind and the rain. The eldest one pushed the other one in. Oh, the dreadful wind and the rain. See, they both had a love for the captain's son. The wind and the rain, but he only cared for the youngest one. All the dreadful wind. Oh, the eldest envied her sister fair. Oh, the wind and the rain, with a pretty little face and a long, long tail. All the dreadful wind. When she went home, Simon had a birthday tea waiting. Afterwards, she told Simon about me, told him I was pregnant. She wanted me to move in with them, this sister he didn't know she had. She knew that instant. The look on his face. She sent him out of the house, kicked him out, called me up, crying, and I went round. I guess I had a feeling I could hear something was wrong in her voice, but I wasn't sure what it was. She called me sister on the phone. She never calls me that. My sister is gone. And she's never coming back. Simon didn't play guitar. He wasn't very musical. He liked to listen, but he was tone deaf. 
Yes. Yeah, it's my guitar. When will the police let me back in the house? They let me take a bag of clothes with me, but... Okay. I parked up in the street. It was busy, so I had to park down the end of the road. Walked up, knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I walked in, Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes in the shoe rack, I shouted out. Um, I walked straight into the kitchen, because he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper, but he wasn't there. I touched the kettle, it was cold. I looked quickly in the living room, nothing. So I walked upstairs to the bedroom and he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. I had a shower. The phone rang whilst I was in the shower. I didn't answer it. I think it was Eric. Then I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, though I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. This time I spoke to him. Then I called Vag and Elena. And then I decided to come and see you. <sighs> okay. Um, I parked up on the street. It was busy, so I parked down the end of the road. I walked up to the house. I knocked on the door. No answer. I took my keys out of my bag. Unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. I could tell because the key wouldn't turn when I tried to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes on the shoe rack. Um, I shouted out for him. I walked straight into the kitchen. He usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. He wasn't there. I touched the kettle. It was cold. Um, I looked quickly into the living room. Nothing. I walked upstairs to the bedroom. He wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. And then I had a shower. Whilst I was in the shower, the phone rang. I think it was Eric, his boss. I didn't answer it. Then I came out and I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, but I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. I spoke to him. Then I called Simon's parents and then I decided to come and see you. That enough? Mm. I left the next day, Saturday. I slept for a few hours in the car. And when I woke up, I came straight back. Uh, Simon wasn't returning my calls and I wanted to try and make up. I got back to the house and Simon wasn't there. And I... Is there a bin?
There's a girl and she's staring out of the window. She's sad. She's trapped. She's here. She's looking out the window because her mother won't let her out. I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. She was a girl, by the way, the baby. We were going to call her Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana, but I didn't want her to have a symmetrical name. Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to hear the story? It's a real life fairy tale. I wasn't in the house all of Friday night. After the argument, after Sandy left, I left too. I was upset and I wanted to get away. So I took a car. We couldn't afford our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby, if it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months, full of hope. That should eliminate me as a suspect. If I was in Glasgow, can't be in two places at once. Yes, yeah. I would have cleaned them. I changed the sheets too. With the fingerprints in all those places. What kind of hairs? Fairy tales. Stories about lost princesses, evil witches, magical mirrors and lost children. So you see, even before I knew the truth, I'd found it in those stories. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. No, I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until, but it was only a few months after. Yes. It was a shock to him. I mean, we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it.
The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow, so we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. It was like I suddenly didn't exist. I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant, but I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers, drunk guys I'd met in clubs, in parks and alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hearty look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. The legal stuff was completed very quickly. Han moved back in with Simon. Eric gave Simon the week off to help with the move. He decorated, modernised wallpaper curtains. Han insists the attic be left as it was, dollhouse and all. Simon then went up there. Then she told me she wanted to help more. She said I should move in with her. She would come clean with Simon about me. I was family, I couldn't have a baby in a bedsit. I told her I didn't want to tell Simon. Told her to wait for the time being. Her story is that she'd waited for him to come back. She put on my wig, some of my clothes, pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said he wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present, another mirror, just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that unique present. She went crazy, smashed the mirror. They argued, screamed. He hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. She'd only meant to scare him off. Body. I did not real. And his throat. It looked like his throat had been cut. And I didn't see his glasses. He has these thick glasses.
in his throat. How? Like I said before, it was three, something like that. I walked in, saw Simon. He was on the floor of the living room. His throat had been cut. There was a lot of blood. Instead, the bruise. I have a really fast metabolism, so stuff like that just comes and goes. I don't know if there's much more that I can tell you, but I haven't already told the other policemen. I found the body. I... Really? Okay. Here's the rest. Too, but it didn't happen. I slept with so many boys, men. My body refused. I think my period stopped because hers had. I was pretty ill. I mean, how could we stay the same now? I felt like Hannah had really fucked things up, set us down separate paths. We had become different. Rehearsed? You ask me the same question, you'll get the same answer. Is that your evidence? Of course I thought about what happened then. It's all I've thought about. My husband is dead. Rehearsed? You ask me the same Yes. The first time we saw each other, it was strange. We both realised at the same moment, I think. We must have seen each other before, but there was this instant when we first realised it wasn't a reflection. 
the reflection was staring back. I think I was five. It was my birthday. My reflection was wearing a party hat and waving. I knew what party hats were from books. And it suddenly occurred to me, today must be my birthday. I waved back and we just spent ages waving at each other and copying each other's movements. Mother wanted me to grow my hair long, but I kept cutting it myself. I wanted to look like my reflection. She always had short hair when she was little. Mother would hide the scissors, but I would find a way. Cut it with a bread knife, something like that. My reflection would always leave her house and go on adventures, but I never could. Mother taught me at home. And I had books and TV. Oh, TV was magical, but it was only on when it wanted to be, so I spent a lot of time reading books. I wanted to see my reflection. I thought that if I touched her, something would happen. We would become one. One girl. The fairy tale was over, the witch was dead, and I'd be restored to my rightful place. gone to bed feeling ill, thinking it was flu or something. The neighbour called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days, no one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage, in the worst year of my life, and I'd been so happy to get married and after that it was just like, fuck. It's all that matters really, the baby. Simon's dead, but the baby, that's how he will live on, our baby. You're reaching here, and I don't know why. No, I've never cheated on anyone. I've never taken anything from anyone. Simon is dead. But I have my baby to care for. Why are you trying to make me sad? Why are you so obsessed with sex and affairs? You cheated on your wife. Is this your thing? It was supposed to be a secret. Just because Simon is dead, it doesn't mean I have to give up all his secrets. It doesn't have anything to do with what happened to Simon. No one murdered my husband because he cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford.
there was a conference, something to do with double glazing, in Oxford. Are you sure? What would you be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. Hannah had a miscarriage. This was late in the pregnancy and it left her infertile. Felt like the universe had corrected its course. We were aligned again. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Eric had given him a full-time position after he left school. And then... A long time. We got married when I was 17. He has a wallet, a huge silly thing, leather, real leather, I think. He packs it full of stuff, business cards, receipts, lottery tickets. He always carries it in his back pocket. I think that's why he's got a bad back. He sets the discs. I haven't seen it, so he must have it on him. He always takes it out of his back pocket before when he comes in. If he's in the house. I got a job to contribute, you know. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. They said it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. So you see, it's always been complicated between me and Simon. It's never just been the two of us, there's always been Pressure. <laughs> Mum and Dad never knew what was going on and got so good at it. We were so in sync that we'd use each other to cheat. If one of us had a hangover, the other one would go to school. Whoever was best at a subject would sit the exam. There were lots of differences between us. Some things one is better than the other at. Yeah, I've been round to Doug and Eleanor's and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. Um, I hoover my dust every week, maybe less. I once asked Eleanor how often I should dust and she said, if people ask, tell them you do it once a week. But every few weeks it's okay. I think she was just trying to make me feel better. I mean, when I was there, she was hoovering every day. You know, ran an audit house. You know how that generation is putting on a brave front. Hmm. She has secret stashes of cigarettes. Doug doesn't even know she smokes. When I was there, I saw her. She has these sort of porcelain 
vase that's ornamental next to the Reader's Digest books. Cigarettes inside. And she still has them. I mean, last time I was there, I looked in a vase. There was a fresh pack. I mean, all those years of marriage, and she still has a secret like that. Nineteen eighty four was an awful year in the end. We were living at Doug and Eleanor's. I lost the baby at the end of spring and my parents died in the summer. It was a hot summer, a heat wave. So when they discovered the bodies it was just awful. Because of the circumstances then dying together like that, they brought in a lot of police, a forensic entomologist. I had to look that up. It was because of the heat. It was just awful. so ago. It would have been the Saturday before my birthday. You know, I get like that on the weekends, have a lie-in, then want to get up and blitz the house. Yes, I'll take a lie detector test. I've never taken a lie detector test before. Does it really work? my name. That was the only question I failed. <laughs> Your lie detector works. My name. That was the only question I failed. <laughs> Your lie detector works. Differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm, she is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took him in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. Bruce. Oh, yeah, no, it's nothing. I was going through the top cupboard in my kitchen and the chair slipped and I kind of hit the door with my face. It really hurt like hell. <laughs> if one of us got hurt, the other one would have to be hurt too. A grazed knee, a bruise. When I lost my tooth first, 
we had to put our harness to match. Once I slept with a boy who was seeing another girl. The girlfriend came up to Hannah the next day and punched her in the face, gave her a huge black eye. That night, she had to do the same to me. But she almost went too far. I couldn't see out of that eye for days. She snapped the frozen piece up for me from the kitchen. Mm. So much of our bodies were synchronised anyway. We started our period on the same day. All our childhood diseases, stomach bugs, nits. This was nine, about nine. I went round and she was waiting for me. She was furious and so angry. The kind of anger you could only have towards yourself. We screamed at each other, argued, cried, we fought. I hit her back, left a bruise. I had my wig on from performing and she tore it off. Eventually we grew tired of fighting and I left. Okay, you got me. I'll confess. We were there. It was a dirty weekend. Simon was going to expense it, pretend it was a business trip. I used a made-up name. We stayed at the hotel. Had room service, didn't leave the room. Had a great view of the river, and you could hear the church bells. Like you said, it was very romantic. He saw me singing one of my shows, pure chance. Not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously I knew who he was, but he didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. He guessed my name from letter two told me it was a palindrome, like that would impress me. I enjoyed talking to him. It was amazing to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream. It's like I told you before, I drove. I took the car and drove. I don't have my own car, but I have a spare set of keys. I just drove north. I wanted to think for some space between me and them. Everything I told you before is true. I stopped at Glasgow. I was tired, exhausted. I pulled out and I hit a car. My car was okay, but I was worried about the baby, so I went to A&E to get the okay. Everything was fine. Slept in the car. When I woke, I tried to call Hannah from a payphone. She wasn't answering. And then I decided to drive back. I had decided that she was more important to me than Simon.
Mum and Dad had never had any reason to notice. They were always busy. If Hannah was eating a lot, they didn't mind. She didn't put on any weight. That girl has a healthy appetite. Um, if they heard us talking in the attic, they just thought it was Hannah playing one of her games. And that Eve was our imaginary friend. <laughs> Once, she was already up and dressed and ready to go to school and I snuck down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant! So I ducked into our bedroom <laughs> and seconds later, out came Hannah, dressed and ready. My mum was amazed. when I was at school. I worked part-time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there, my mum worked there before I was born. I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. It was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything, though. I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. Well, she has a knife, but um, she's been cooking, I guess. She's been cooking him his favourite meal. Um, she's his wife. And he's asleep and she doesn't want to wake him because he's ill. That's why she's sad. Because he's ill and... He might die. It's kind of a sad story, so I'm not sure how it ends. When we weren't together, we'd send secret messages by tapping out a code that we'd learn from a book. The knock code. Something prisoners of war would use. We'd tap them out on radiator pipes or the attic floor. We loved our cat, Domino. Um, he had this little bell around his neck to stop him from killing birds in the garden. And we used to write each other notes and put them in the bell and we could send them to each other. Mum found some of the notes once and she thought I was just writing to myself because our handwriting was identical. And we had our own words for things, so she didn't quite understand them anyway. No, they were shut. Most of the windows were really hard to open anyway. They're stifling in summer. They were painted over by my dad. Could have left a door open accidentally. Oh, there's a cat flap in the back door. No, no cat. My parents had a cat before they died called Domino. Was this little black thing with white dots. And we never did anything about the cat flap, but if you were thin, you could maybe squeeze through it. Oh, 
this other person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is, but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? A wig? You mean... But what type of wig? No, I've never worn a wig. What kind of wig? It was my birthday, like you said. We were going to have a meal at home. We had our meal. He gave me his present. I guess I didn't like the present. I did? Well, we met when we were 17, both working at the glaciers. From when I woke up? Okay. I, uh, I woke up, Simon was already up, and he made me birthday breakfast of eggs benedict. Uh, we both had to go to work, so we saved presents till later. Um, I got to work, had some birthday cake, children sang me happy birthday, then I came home. The birthday meal was a takeaway, um, and Simon gave me his present, which I didn't mind. And after that, we talked about the baby. It turned into a big argument. Simon left, I was furious. I wanted to get as far away as I could and get some space to think. So I left. Mm. Mm. About eight years back, it was a present to myself. I shouldn't even be drinking coffee with the baby. It's been hard trying to give it up. I think they say you can have one cup. Oh, my tattoo. <laughs> I got it to express my individuality. It's an apple and a snake. <laughs> so I moved out. Got a small bed set. Got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in a bar in the evenings, so I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any roots. I don't exist. I think so. I mean, to get into our garden, we'd have to climb through other gardens. All the gardens back onto each other, so you'd have to climb over one, two, three gardens to get to ours. I mean, did anyone see anything? Did anyone see anyone come and go, an intruder? Thank <laughs> you.
Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. The blood. It's probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. She was sat behind him. She had my wig on. And she'd been there all day. And she had blood on her. And she was in shock. We were obsessed with fairy tales. Not just the pretty, pretty ones, but the traditional ones. They were dark and real. Bizarre and violent. Felt like life. We had this huge old book that I think Mum must have bought from a library sale. The illustrations had thin tracing paper over them to protect them. They were in colour, shiny plates. At the front of the book was an index of illustrations. We read that more than the actual stories. We'd read aloud the captions and flip between the pictures. There was something intimate about peeling back the tracing paper and dressing the pictures. Rapunzel's hair is cut. The eagle plucks out his heart. The princess pricks her finger. Sorry, sorry. The picture, the way it's drawn, just reminded me of the books we used to read as children. I read those fairy tales over and over, and they were so real to me. Rapunzel was my favourite. My brain is just full of it. How many of these in colour? Did I pass? Sorry, I messed it up with all that Rapunzel stuff. Do you need me to do that card again? And the Glaziers. I worked there some weekends and someone had a part-time job there too. That was Eric's generosity. He was always good at helping out other people's children. Simon was quiet more thoughtful than the other boys. Even then, he had a sense of craftsmanship. It wasn't always rushing stuff. Boys that age are just running around like headless chickens most of the time. Yeah. Plus, he had that look. He looked like a fairy tale prince from one of my books. Simon never cheated on me. He was devoted to me, and I was devoted to him. Nothing in life is easy. We were good to each other. Life isn't a fairy tale. You do what you can. What did your wife do? She didn't kill you. You think I killed Simon because he was having an affair? Well, I didn't kill him. I wasn't even there. 
I was in Glasgow worrying about whether my baby was still growing inside me. I mean, why would I kill Simon? I loved him. I mean, what if they were crazy? You hear about these crazy people all the time. I mean, why would anyone who knew Simon want to kill him? No. The parents decided there would be a wedding. our way of life. We would swap places and take it in turns to do things. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up, we bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes, they're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it rather than have it longer. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch. That was my touch, to make sure the alibi stuck. Yes, we'd fight. No, you're talking to the wrong person if you think I'm some kind of slut. If you think I'm the kind of person that would have had sex with all those guys. Her story is that she'd waited for him to come back. She put on my wig, some of my clothes, pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said he wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present, another mirror, just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that unique present. She went crazy, smashed the mirror. They argued, screamed. He hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. She'd only meant to scare him off.
It lasted about six months. I tried to carry on, but everything was different. Hannah insisted I not pretend to be her around Simon, let alone sleep with him. We didn't share him like the others. The rules had changed. Me living in the attic had become weird in a way it hadn't been before. Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> Was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. <sighs> we were 15. No, um, I was 15. Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once. It was stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realize who's really important to you, you know? Family. family. So Carl fucked off and then there were other boys here and there and then Simon. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous, didn't want to share. Even the first date. We went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went, kept changing places in the toilet. We only had one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me, but that was it. We didn't want another car on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and. She slept with him, broke the rules, deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean, that's when she got pregnant, from that one time. When beautiful people died, we always felt like it was a sign. You remember Princess Grace, Grace Kelly? She died in a car crash the year before we met Simon. We used a Ouija board to speak to her and that gave us the power to find him. That's what we thought then, that people who die tragically leave some kind of magic behind. We used to share dreams. We used to wake up and write them down in our diaries immediately and compare them.
Okay. Um, she's being chased. Um, they're trying to catch her because she did something bad. I guess she broke the rules. Or maybe they think she did something bad. Maybe it wasn't her fault. She looks scared, not guilty. Maybe it was mistaken identity. Did they catch her there? I don't know. sound suspicious. It's not a normal thing to do to drive to the other end of the country. I just, I wanted to keep it simple. I know it was stupid not to tell you everything. Seeing I spent the night in Glasgow when my husband went missing, I thought it would, you know, distract you from what was important. It's different now. Now he's... Yeah, we were 17. It was a nice wedding, people said. Simon looked very handsome in the photos. His parents paid for everything, but he's an only child, so it was important to them. It was what they called a shotgun wedding, but if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. The dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. The train wasn't quite as long, though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. <laughs> Glaciers, but it's only for work. I can't remember the number. Oh, it's in the kitchen. I saw it plugged into its charging cradle. No. Everyone loved Simon. He's a glazier who doesn't have much money. I, I don't know. I don't know. Sure, yes, of course, if that would help. Will you phone the house to let me know when you want to come round? Then I can make sure that I'm there. No, he was as shy as me. I asked, well, I asked a friend to ask him out for me. We had our first date at the Odeon in North End. We went to see Whiskey Business. I had on my one best dress. Simon paid. He bought me a whisper, and I was worried about getting chocolate on my teeth. Thank <laughs> you. 
After the kiss, the next time, he took me back to the house, to our parents' house, to their house. So, it was definitely him. <laughs> I sometimes think he wanted to get caught to prove to himself that we were different people. He told me about his marriage, told me how his wife was completely different to me. I almost burst out laughing. After the kiss, it was definitely him. I sometimes think he wanted to get caught to prove to himself. Mm. She recognized me from the window and she hit me. They had there was a dollhouse out there. I went into the attic. It was her. Yes, I speak with Eleanor at least once a day. Not that there's anything much to say. A black coffee, thanks. No sugar. Sweet enough as it is. Are you arresting me? No. Fuck off. Open this door. Like I said, I think I was popping out to get something, ran out of something, had to grab something. I sometimes drive too fast. If you want, you can arrest me for that. For fuck's sake. Can I 
believe. Are you going to arrest me? No. They'd laugh you out of the building. A lawyer would make mincemeat of you. This is a nice of them. This is where you take people when it's time to arrest them. Yes. No lawyer. What are you going to arrest me for? Can you arrest someone who doesn't exist? At the time they said it was poison, food poisoning. I mean, I felt so guilty. If I'd still been at home, maybe I could have done something. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Something must have happened to him on his way home. He could be hurt. I mean, why hasn't he phoned? I just, I don't know. Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid, and she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. My mother called me Eve. Let me see. Yes. I drove in here because I remember well I went over the river. And then there was a church. There. Yeah. And I probably part well I remember seeing a street sign called Princess Street. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it must be this one. There. God, I don't know. Could be anyone. Maybe someone follows him back from the pub. 
but why would you let them in? It doesn't make sense. Yes, I understand my rights. No, I don't need a lawyer. Can I leave? Are you going to arrest me? No, they'd laugh you out of the building. A lawyer would make mincemeat of you. No, I'm okay. Okay, I'll try my best to remember. No, it's okay, the other detective has just gone to get me off. Okay, so you want to eliminate me as a suspect? It's okay, sounds weird. I'm not great at making up stories. Childhood sweethearts. Something like that. Are you married, detective? Must think it's very cool that their dad is a police detective. They said it was food poisoning. There was something in the food they ate. My dad liked to pick mushrooms, grow them too. They said it was the mushrooms. It was hard to believe. Death caps. They have a skirt around the cap. My dad taught me that. But, I mean, the police had no reason to think it was suspicious. They lived alone. And no one had any reason to hurt them. I was living in the attic. It was a very hard time. I was depressed. I was still pretty sick of the STD. When I came down one morning, they were dead. They were in bed and both had been sick. They'd thrown up a lot. And I'd slept through it. The police said it was the mushrooms they ate. Dad was a mushroom expert. He used to take us picking with him and he taught us how to recognize them. And there's no way he would have picked death caps. But the police believe that's what happened. They never even looked in the attic. Then my parents died. It 
was the worst year of my life. A miscarriage and then my parents. I mean, I was infertile. Thought I was. They told me I was infertile after the miscarriage because of complications. changes. You just become more yourself. Simon was my prince and that hasn't changed. Nothing else happened that night. We talked, then I said goodbye. Then next week I was sitting in the bar again and there he was. And again the next week, he offered to buy me a meal. I told them I had already eaten. Um, and so we got chips and ate them on the beach instead. When we said goodbye, he asked me to kiss him. <laughs> Romantic. Yes. I thought about telling Hannah I felt guilty after the kiss. But then it began to feel like this was the way it should be. Sharing, like we had before. He never mentioned her to me. There was the Simon with me and the Simon with her. It was almost like it was a different Simon. But I told her it was one of my boyfriends, someone I had met in the bar. I think she was happy, but I could tell she was thinking, why couldn't it happen to her and Simon? They were the ones with the real life. Why not them? sound suspicious. 
It's not a normal thing to do to drive to the other end of the country. I just. Yeah, I pulled over and slept in the car. This was just by the side of the road. I was exhausted. She's crying, I guess. She's sad because she thought she saw her husband with another woman. But it's okay because she finds out it wasn't her husband, it was his brother. And so it's fine. I've been into work. I've been, I mean, I guess I've just been waiting, waiting to hear from you, hear from my husband. When you suspect someone of murdering their husband. This is the third day running you've called me in. I speak to Doug and Eleanor every day. And they say you've been asking a lot of questions about me. Should I be worried? Am I a suspect? Well, there you go. How many kids? You have children. Really? You're going to ask me about my sex life? I mean, isn't that private? Are you married? How is your sex life? So, our sex life is probably fairly average for a couple after 10 years of marriage. Mm -hmm. 
Simon was very moral about that sort of thing. He wouldn't just walk out there and sleep with anyone. He wasn't that kind of guy. He took his marriage very seriously. When you've been married for 10 years, stuff accumulates. You could argue about anything. And he's so nice. That doesn't help. He tries to smooth things over, and that just makes it worse. We're both passive aggressive, so we never normally argue directly about anything. small bed sit, got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in a bar in the evenings, so I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any roots. I don't exist. Then she told me she wanted to help more. She said I should move in with her. She would come clean with Simon about me. I was family, I couldn't have a baby in a bedsit. I told her I didn't want to tell Simon. Told her to wait for the time being. Can you arrest someone who doesn't exist? Nothing else happened that night. We talked, then I said goodbye. Thank <laughs> you. 